Hello, and thank you for joining me today on Loyal World Info. Another day of the globe spinning, another day of global news to digest. I offer a sane, rational voice in an insane, rational time. I will be your host, and let's get into today's topics. Hey, today is April 14th, and let's get into the topics of the day. Mobile love goes free. Encouraging animal stories. Gaming mobile profits bless. And Minecraft graduation story challenge. Heroes around the world today. Communicating with children with against crime and go directly to court now. Fast foods may vanish. McDonald's and Burger King collapse. A mask shortage and new reusable face mask inventions that are being created around the world. Baby love. Healthcare infection rates. A look at our health workers in action. And penalties for breaking the law in Taiwan. A value of purpose and responsibility segment. A commentary by me. So let's get into today's story, shall we? Let's get on to our first topic of the day. And what better topic to talk about than love? Dating app sees potential in Vietnam as users surge amid the virus outbreak. Yamete has more than 2 million users after three years of operation in Vietnam. And that's a, a love app. Dating apps are nothing new to many Vietnamese people, but the COVID-19 pandemic ha- seems to have increased their popularity. A local Tinder us- user told Vietnam News, I never used to pay for Tinder and just used their free service they provided, but I started a six-month paid package in March because I was bored at home and I needed pe- more people to share with. At the age of 34, with a busy working schedule, Nguyen started searching online for her other half in September last year. Though he has has been matched with more than 10 women, none of them fit the bill. Vin Dinh paid 400000 so we have $17, for a six-month package. Now compare that with the U.S. What is it? I don't know. I don't have Tinder. What, fifteen to thirty dollars a month? Uh, it's not too much, and it's convenient. It was much more difficult finding matches offline. He said earlier this month, Tinder said in a press release that in this crazy time, people are feeling are feeling a potex of mixed anxiety and loneliness. Oh, how sad. So it, it so it announced it would activate its passport future for free to all members to let them match potential love interests across the globe to deal with loneliness created from social distancing in many parts of the world. The future is normally only available for paying users. Tinder is one of many dating apps available on the market. Another included local apps such as Vietnam Cupid, Yimmy, and Rudolph, Rudolph, Rudcalf, I guess, as well as international apps that include OkCupid, Facebook Dating Grind, is that Grinder? I never use that app either. Ch- Chincher or Joyride. God, I don't know these names. With uh, a population of 96 million and higher. High number of tech-savvy citizens, Vietnam it has a great potential for dating apps. However, compared to the other markets, the revenue from dating apps in Vietnam is low. Oh, what a shame. According to the analyst by Ani- App Anime, it is a mobile status report that uh, says they earn 2.2 billion dong a year. So that's about uh, uh, two million dollars. The market's worth is about 1.5 mil- billion in the U.S., 400 million in Japan, and 13 million in India. 
The report also says the number of users searching for partners via the mobiles, mobiles in Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore soared last last year in the region. In particular, Indonesia is 6 million uh, online dating apps. But there is no data for lo the local market yet. Okay, I'm going to actually stop here because I want to give my thoughts on this whole thing and a little backstory. So stay with me. Okay. So my thoughts on mobile love goes free. Tinder goes free. Tinder goes free. So are there any apps around you that are going free? I'd like to know. And why are you using them? Are you using them because you're isolated? And you know, maybe, I don't know, you want to go texting or, I don't know, play games together. I guess you play games on phones. Or are you using them actually to hook to hook up and find love? I'm a little curious because it says social distancing. So I don't know if you're really allowed to go meet these people. So that's why I'm wondering. Now, when you actually want to meet these people, is it for the friend or the companionship? Me, I always like for friend and companionship. I never really did it for love. And hence, I will give my story. You know, I I went to the Philippines, one of the very first international places I traveled, and it was a very scary place. Every corner there was some guy trying to scam me or some prostitute, I guess, was trying to swindle me. So I did not enjoy my time, and I did not enjoy the country. So uh, before I went to my next trip, I went and um, went on, like, uh, I think it was Vietnam, not Vietnam, it was Taiwan Cupid, I think so it was. And I started teaching English for free. And, and I did that to many countries, from Taiwan to Vietnam to Thailand. And many of these people are my friends to this day. So, yes, I used, I used dating apps in the past, and I enjoyed learning from others and making friends along the way they'd be my tour guides when i visited or they'd educate me about the culture and language and whatnot and i don't have time to do that anymore i wish i did because i would do it more uh, now my question for you uh how much do you pay for dating apps remember he got six months for 17 dollars. that's pretty good which one do you prefer i actually like the vietnam cupid uh myself and have you had a positive or negative experience? Please leave your thoughts below. I'd really be interested in learning and hearing from you. Moving on to our next topic, and this is more on a positive note, and it's for animal lovers. And this is also is in Vietnam. A herd of endangered elephants found in Quang Nam province. Quang Nam, a herd of Eight Asian elephants and endangered species listed in the International Union for Conservation Nature has been found living in an elephant conservation area in Nong Song District, Quang Nam Province. Deputy Head of the Provincial Ranger and Forest Protection Subdepartment Tu Bong Kong confirmed on Friday that elephants have been found in a conservative conservation zone. Following a biodiversity evolution program launched in February. According to the report, the herd includes a mature male, one semi-mature male, three mature females and two semi-mature females and a one-year-old calf. It is said the herd had the basic structure of a gr to grow in the south of the conservation zone in the near future. Primarily forest in Nongsong District, Quam Nam Province provides shelter for the herd of Asian elephants. Vietnam has around 100 endangered elephants living in the wild. Photo courtesy of USAID. In the previous survey released a few years ago, at least five elephants were found to be living in a forest in Quang Long commune. 
in the same district following the following samples of dong and footprints. Dong is the word for poop in Vietnamese. The elephant, or feces, the elephant protection area launched in 2017. It is part of the United States Agency for Inter International Development fund funded green assistant projects. The protected area covers 19,000 hectares of critical habitat for one of the largest groups of endangered A Asian elephants in the province. The U.S. government through USAID is working with the Quang Nam leaders to improve the livelihoods of locals living in the uh, living in and around the protected area, conduct biodiversity monitoring, and raising conservation awareness among locals. Vietnam has established a system of 176 protested areas, starting with the first national park in Choc Pong established in 1962. The USAID Green Animus Projects Working Tantrum with the provincial authorities will engage with small hectare farmers and their families to improve the livelihoods of the, and increase investments in the climate. Okay, and I want to move on to one more positive article, but what do you think about the elephants? By the way, an endangered um, animal in Vietnam would be in a thing called a uh, red book. So what endangered animals do you know? And have you ever seen any weird animal or rare animal in the wild? But I want to move on before I give you my main questions. This one actually takes place in t t Taiwan. And this is about a fire department honoring retired dogs. The Taipei Fire Department honored a retiring rescue dog in a ceremony yesterday and extended its appreciation to the person who adopted the German Shepherd. The dog's name, Humble, received an honorary medal for his contributions to disaster relief at a ceremony at which the department and the adopter surname Lee, signed the adoption papers for the department commissioner. The department said it hoped this ceremony would draw attention to the rescue dogs and their post-retirement adoption in a practice it began in 2015. Space and resources at the department are limited, so retiring dogs would be better taken care of with adopted families, he said. Every year, the department evaluates the housing conditions of people who apply to adopt and determine the best candidates. He said, adding that Lee is a canine and loving person who can offer great care. The job of rescue dogs due to demanding work environments requires a lot of stamina, so they usually serve four years at most, or until they receive seven or eight, until they reach seven or eight. But they are always in great health, Wu said. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Internals National Fire Agencies yesterday began accepting adoption applications for five of its rescue dogs that are retiring this year. They are eight-year-old Shenning and seven-year-old. Okay, so it's going on with the rest of them. Uh, people interested in adopting the dogs have to apply by Friday the 17th. And adding, there'll be more details later. So this is my question. First off, do you work for a fire department um, or police station? Do you have rescue pets? Or how do you treat them? How are they unique? What do they do? I would love to hear that and you share your thoughts below. As for your the others, have you ever adopted a pet? What made you decide to adopt one instead of buying one? Do you know any place people can adopt pets? or agencies they can donate to, feel free to leave the resources and your thoughts below. And stay tuned for our next topic. 
Our next two stories of the day deal with gaming, and I'm going to start with the positive one first. Next, the second one's going to be more of a rant. With graduation ceremonies canceled, Tempspok Polytechnic students hold a visual one in Minecraft. And I actually encourage you, if you're listening to this on a podcast, to go to my linked video and I will have a few pictures of uh, what they did in this in that video. The graduation ceremonies are important and our important ceremonies events to mark a milestone in one's road in academia. But what's probably more important right now is keeping safe and alive during the deadly global pandemic. It's been a disheartening decision, but 32,500 students across all polytechs and institutes of technical education will not be receiving their diploma certificates and transcripts in the grand ceremony. Instead, they'll just have to make do with receiving their academic documents through the mail. Originally scheduled to take place in May and July, the schools have canceled their ceremonies outright to be be in line with the government highlighted safety, safe distancing measures during the, the outbreak. While some graduating, ex, graduating express their disappointment with the Minister for ed, Education, others found an outlet through Minecraft. No, no, really. A student from Team MS Polytechnic School of Business might not be receiving his diploma in the communications and media management on stage, but he sure can get his fellow graduates together online for a virtual ceremony in a sandbox video game. For non-gamers and non-parents, Minecraft is a highly popular video game among kids where players inhabit a world made of elemental blocks. These blocks can be extra- extracted for raw materials and crafted into tools for structures. Even huge structures like buildings and mountains and massive sculptures. The video uploaded on YouTube by Team Mass students by the name of Ethan showcased just how elaborate the game graduation ceremony was crafted complete with giant auditorium, stage, lighting system, and fireworks display. This was done through the game's creative mode, where players have access to all the resources in the game to build whatever they wanted. It was the setting of for a jokery graduation. Ethan and several met up in the, the server and w- walked to the blocky stage to receive the digital certificates after the introductory speech of course. It wouldn't be the first time for first time the a graduation ceremony was held in Minecraft. During a lockdown climate last month a bunch of Japanese students who were also unable to attend the graduation built their school's auditorium hall in the game. For their own digital ceremony. As for Ethan, Ethan and gang, own take on the idea, this would definitely be one of the better ideas to celebrate an occasion that the minister or encourage graduate students to have. So, okay, so I'll, I also want to say Minecraft, yes, you can do that in Minecraft, but Nintendo Switch and the PC and PS4 also have a game called Dragon Quest Builders. You can basically do the same thing, except that's on all the platforms. So that's one story I wanted to cover. And what do you think about this? Does this encourage you to do this for your school, for your graduation? If not, what uh, unique idea will you do so your graduation will be remembered for years to come, be meaningful? If you will do it, 
we, we upload it on a website or so if you do if you email it to me I will post it stay tuned for my second my second uh, gaming article I had a very positive game story video game now I'm going to move on to a MMO RPG and a mobile game the game that's in question right now is Bless Mobile as the Google's top 10 sells new cash cow CD. So, okay. And let's read three paragraphs. And this was a collaboration between NeoWiz and a Chinese company. So, I'm going to read a few paragraphs first. The new mobile MMORPG, Bless Mobile by Joy City, is entering the top 10 of Google Play sales and establishing itself as a new cash cow. In addition to the existing lineup, Bless Mobile also succeeded in the box office success and this year's earnings improvement as is noted. According to the mobile game ranking analysis, Gavagallion, Bless Mobile has been ranked 10th in the Google Play sales ranking since the 11th this is the 10 days since its launch on march 31st it is understood that some bug fixes uh, content improvement and new product ad additions have led to the increased ranking in fact over the last weekend all six servers of blessed mobile maintain a congested situation congested means full and a participation of users was hot, means many. In the related industry, the average daily sales of Blast Mobile is established at 300 million won. Okay, so that is $300,000 a day. And it is also seeking to prolong the box office by sequentially introducing guild content such as new content disputes and guild punishment dungeons which can be the core content for Bless Mobile. Thanks to the success of Bless Mobile, Joy City's earnings improvement is also raising expectations. Joy City is recorded a sell of 11.31 billion won. The way you work with a won versus US dollars is you knock off three zeros. So one billion is one million. And for operating profit is about 8.5 billion won last year. Thanks to the global performance of mobile gaming, such as existing freestyle series, Pirates of the Caribbean, Wave of War, and Gunship Battle Total Warfare. Okay, so I am going to stop here and I, and I want to give you my thoughts, a little back history about this game. So at the moment, this game is the mobile version. But this game came out God, around 2007, 8. It was a launch in Korea as a PC game. Back then, and even now, it's ranked one of the top 10 most expensive PC games. It was like $60 million to make. And the game flopped hard in its own country. They tried exporting this game to Russia. Russia on the PC said it was so bad that they the publisher in Russia just shipped it back they, they canceled the contract then they shipped this thing to America and they put it on Steam when they put it on Steam again a lot of the Americans and the NAE were all hyped but they never fixed anything in this game and they basically took the money and then within six months they canceled the game took the cash and ran then they went to Bandai, who now has just launched an Xbox version of this game. So everywhere this game has gone, it's got like the most polluted IP things. But this is what drives me insane is like most Western players will say that any name with Bless in it is a taunted IP. You stay far away from it. Do not touch it. it but evidently... I, this is does, that doesn't matter. So here are my thoughts. I want to ask you. 
do you spend more money when you're bored or self distancing? I, I wonder if people are buying this stuff just because they're indoors because of the quarantine. Who is them? Are gamers cries even worthless? Do you remember BlizzCom, like when they launched the Diablo game, Diablo Mobile, made by a Chinese company? And everybody's booing. But, uh, you know, I don't think anybody's going to care because that mobile version is going to make tons more than anything that the PC or console can make. So, does NA, EU matter? I mean, is our population so small that you'd be displeased with, the, I don't know, the Asian or the Chinese because the more people, more chances for money? Does the value of an IP or reputation not matter? Again, this thing basically swindled every country it stepped foot in. And there, I just don't get it. So, and you can ask any YouTuber, any gamer, they would say the same thing. They would be shocked when they find out about this article. And then what is it about mobile games that encourages you to spend or act act rash? Like, you know, when people say, oh my gosh, I, I spent 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 dollars on uh, FIFA or when I played um, Path of Exile, I just bought all these boxes. Or Call of Duty, I bought a red dot. I don't know. I don't. I don't buy microtransactions. Yes, I buy games. Yes, I buy content, but I've never bought microtransactions. So I want to know. I want to know what makes you spend, or what do you look for when you spend? Why? And do you accept? The, the Minecraft or Dragon Quest Builders Challenge. If, if so, send me your results to me and I will air them. If not, what unique way will you celebrate your graduation? I look forward to all your thoughts below on both of these topics. So like, comment, or subscribe. Moving on to something more positive. Heroes around the world today, young and old, both make a difference. Our first story takes place on Jeju Island. Jeju is an island in Korea. It's kind of like a Hawaii place. Many beautiful um, tourist attractions. I lived there for a while myself. Monduk Museum provides food to seniors in solitude. Monduk Museum deposited 200 kilograms of rice and 20 boxes of ramen and water to the Jeju Support Center for the elderly living alone for the seniors who have become isolated from the spread of the virus outbreak. The deposited foods were delivered to 20 households of the elderly who live in the Yongdong and Jokyeon up areas. Director Kim Song Hong and Maduk Museum said, Upon hearing that many are in desperate need of help because of their serious situations following the spread of the bug, he remarked the museum will continue to share rice and water and ramen we have already obtained with those in need. So this is a museum, and it shows some girls that work there, and they, they're giving the stuff off to the community. So that's great. Now I have another story to share for people of, of our time. Uh, boy, don't, this one actually takes place in the Philippines. So usually money is tighter in Philippines than in, than in South Korea. A uh, boy donates save money for a bicycle to help frontliners. A six-year-old boy from Alakasan, Kotashio City gave up a chance to have a bicycle on his birthday to instead help the frontliners fighting the virus in the area. The parents of Kurt have been saving money to buy a bike for his birthday on April 13th, but they were surprised when their son informed them that he he would rather donate the money. This is my memorial birthday ever. Yeah, instead instead of buying a bike for for from my savings, 
have decided to buy a pig and celebrate my special day by giving packed lunch to the frontliners in my city, said the birthday boy during an online interview. Thank you, frontliners, for your dedication and sacrifice in the battle. International pageant director and talent manager Joseph Olick noticed the sacrifice of the frontliners in the area and in the news. Zuhu, who is known in the area as Little Policeman Manando, said that he is willing to wait way for his bicycle next year. Nag offered in saying prayers as he said offer him prayers, his mother said. Cannibal said that his parents led the distribution of food packs to the frontliners. Neighbors laughed at his kind at the kindness and his parents during the difficult times. Actually it's a lot of Okay, lauded. Yeah, neighbors lauded. You know what? So my thoughts on these two uh, heroes that we read about today. I know many are using mobile apps to order food, but you can send orders to isolated people or senior homes to warm their day. The young can go on apps and help strangers with subjects or share in a hobby or teach origami, or sign language, or play a game together. Reach out and try to help and be a friend during this time. Question for you is, who have you helped out, and how did you how did you help them out, and how did you feel about it? Was it a solo thing, a group thing? Anyway, leave your comments below. I would love to hear. Moving on to our next article of the day and this is a little touchy subject for many but um you know when you're when you're trying to discipline kids especially in stressful times you know sometimes people can get too aggressive other times they don't know how to present the situation in an effective way or you can, you can if you present it wrong you can traumatize the kid or you can make them have a bad rapport in this case, you can have a bad report for your parents, a bad report for the law, a bad report for whatever, with whoever. So this article does take place in uh, for Malaysia. And I wanted to read this first because this is going to wrap into our next article about how serious things are getting there, but um, how compassionate the law enforcement was in this particular case. On Long Asta, kids caught violating the MCO will never be arrest, arrested, kids cop says. Jorba Moore, the police will remain strict enforcement on the MCO and enhancement, but will use discretion in dealing with children. The police chief said the police would never arrest children as it would leave a deep trauma on them. He was uh, com com commenting on the video of uh, Kapong Malak Paya, who were stopped by a police team passing through the area. We are strict in terms of enforcement on the, of the MCO, but we need to be creative in approaching kids because they are naive. Naive means they don't believe it. I'm not sure. Really? Unicorns exist? Common Ahoy said on April 4th. He said the kids were scolded by the police after receiving a request from the village chief to help monitor the kids' activities in the village. The incident occurred at 2.30 p.m. on Saturday the 11th of April. After the patrol team comprising of a Lance Corporal Rudison and a Corporal found the children walking behind a park. A 2 minute 46 second video was recorded by the Corporal and forwarded to the village chief before it went viral on social media. 
In the video, the children are see, seen carrying, well, crying and trying to negotiate to get home, promising not to go out again. In the process of uh, reprehending them, the policeman also bought five dollars and fifty, well, five fifty RMB, really ruples, Malaysian ruples, worth of the product from the children. Usually, it's three ruples is one dollar. The video was uploaded by a Facebook user who had received close to 60,000 views and been shared more than 97,000 times. The video received positive feedback for the way that the patrol team handled the matter. He even supported the kids while nagging them. Awesome. The Facebook user said he w this was a better way to teach children a lesson instead of scolding them. The politician authorities set a good example on how to teach kids and this can be amplified by parents and teachers and elderly. Um, so I want to stop there and I want to give my thoughts on this. Okay, my thoughts. Communicating with children, crime and go directly to court. So in this article we read, in stressful times one must keep their head clear. They must remember not to scare the young and present their information to, in many ways to address many different ages and crowds. Yeah, you know, when I was teaching English, sometimes I would teach um, university students and I knew that they, they might be going to Malaysia, Vietnam, China. And I try to tell them just because you can speak English does not mean you can present your your give orders in one particular way. So sometimes you have to present your topic two or three different ways to get your employees to act the way you want them to. So they practice that. Now, my question for you, the user, the listener, is what did you scold your child for in the past? And do you wish you presented yourself in a different way to get your point across better? If so, I'd love to hear your examples below. The reason I gave that article first is this came out today as well, because we just talked about children, but now let's talk about adults. The minister said cops to drag MCO violators straight to court from tomorrow. Okay, so Kuala Lumpur, which is the capital of Malaysia, the police will be focusing less on issuing compound notices, which is a ticket, ticket to floaters of movement to control the MCO. And now we'll be, uh, they will bring them straight to the court, the uh, senior minister said. In the press conference live broadcast, the Ismail Sabari said that the new decision was decided by the government seeing how many people were still defying the MCO. We see the, that we see that the racket and acting are going on just as if they citizens do not care or are not afraid of the laws we have today. Maybe 1,000 RMB, and that's about $300, 3350 is not seen as too high to scare them. So whom are we still continuously violating the MCO? So we agreed that, that the police beginning tomorrow won't focus on compounds or tickets. Beginning tomorrow, those who are caught will be remanded and brought to the court. Let the court decide based on Section 24, Act 342. The court can punish them not more than two years imprisonment and for a sub subsequent offense, five years imprisonment. So, all right. Now, I want to ask, does that seem harsh? It's kind of like getting a ticket, but not even a ticket. They're just cuffing you and taking you to jail. You know, so this is, you know, what are your thoughts on that? This is Malaysia. 
uh, and my question for you, is this type of brute force really needed or is it an overextension of the law that may become the normality by 2030? Because if you think back, like uh, when 9-11 in America happened, they passed all these spy and um, spy programs, Freedom, Freedom Act, Patriot Act, to spy on their citizens, and now they're just law. And so will they eventually just make this a law for everything here on after? And would you like this kind of thing, or do you think we should be careful giving the government so much power? Leave your comments below. I'd love to hear about the children and about this article here. Moving on to our next topic of the day. This takes place more or less with fast food and fast food chains. We have two major chains today, and we'll just go over the stories and then give a comment on them and how they maybe will not survive this apocalypse. Five McDonald's employees are down with the bug virus. All other staff at affected branches on leave of absence. And this is McDonald's again. So this McDonald's in Singapore, though, so don't worry, America. Five McDonald's Singapore employees have been diagnosed with the bug at the fast food chain on Sunday. The five work at McDonald's in Park Lane on the East Central Outlets. They have since been quarantined in the medical facilities and have been monitored by medical personnel in accordance. All other employees who worked at the affected branches have been informed by the company to isolate themselves for 14 days. So think about this, forget the backline members, but think about anybody who it was at a cash register with those people, and they, they are the people that drive through or the ones that hand you your bag or bring your food out to you. If, they, if these were one of the five members, how many people one day did they have contact with? That is insane. This is a particular measure that the company has undertaken for the safety of all employees, regardless of whether they have come into contact with uh, affected pr persons. And their daily temperature and health conditions will be closely monitored. The four restaurants have also been deep clean and closed for business till further notice in accordance with the National Environment Agency. McDonald's Singapore said that affected employees comprise a crew of managers, three females and two males between the ages of 25 and 45 years old. Uh, Managing Director of McDonald's Singapore, Kenneth Chan, said our priority now is that is has been since the start of the pandemic is to keep the restaurant safe for everyone. He encouraged customers to always wear masks when visiting McDonald's restaurants for takeaways, adding we are determined to stay united with the rest of the Singapore to flatten out the curve. All right, so I want to stop there, and I want to bring us to the second article. And this one actually is about Burger King. Okay, can Burger King find a buyer? Okay, so in Burger King's case, they uh, they have many stores in... I wanted to bring up New Zealand Burger King as well. In New Zealand has been in a strict lockdown for nearly three weeks and all restaurants, including those serving fast food, have been temporarily closed. Company receivers said Tuesday they hope to sell dozens of Burger King restaurants to a new franchise as the owner and get them reopened after the lockdown ends. So my question is, um, what, what is it about retail space? What do you think is going to happen to these sit-down diners? Whether it's McDonald's, it's Burger King, it's Pizza Hut, Taco Bell. You know, what is the value of retail space if you can't uh, make money off of it? And how will that affect even the community that you have your house where you live in? You can always say, oh, our city has, you know, a red lobster. Our city has a lotteria. But if people can no longer sit enough, then it kind of cheapens the value of your city. 
And I also wanted to bring up about Abraham Lincoln on this. You know, Abraham Lincoln, when he was alive and a president, he did not even think twice when he sacrificed one-tenth of the population to keep the country as one. He's like, yes, I can sacrifice one-tenth of the population in this war, and I can keep the South from succeeding the Union. So why are so many scared to give up mass freedoms and movement right now? Because it's not one-tenth of the people. There's what they say, 100,000, maybe 60,000 people died. But it's okay to give up all of our freedoms and all of your rights and all of our businesses that you've grown up with. I don't know. I'm leaving that up to you. What does this say to you? You know, that brings us another point, too, when it comes to fast food. I am in Vietnam currently, and I was here a few years ago, too. And McDonald's and many fast food places fell here because these cart people come around and they sell more healthier food cheaper. And they serve it faster. So that brings me to my point. Do you think this could actually be a real boom for people to in other countries just to get out and sell something on their street corner, assuming the states uh, made the laws that make it okay, because that would bring the community together and you wouldn't have to worry about people sitting down or whatever and be healthier food. Anyway, leave your thoughts below. I'd love to hear. Moving on, our next three articles are more about tech and safety. And these will involve the face, uh, face mask. And so let's get into it. The first one is in Singapore. Coronavirus Singapore creates a reusable face shield for frontliners amid a global shortage of protective gear. Singapore, the, in light of the global shortage of surgical masks, any personal protective equipment, local defensive technology, body defensive science and technology agency has created the first face shield for personal for personnel on the front lines of the fight against the new coronavirus. Called Face Protect Plus. The face shield is adjustable and reusable and protects the users and the people they interact with with against accidental fluid splash and droplets, the agency said in a press on April 14th. In the Facebook post on Tuesday, the defense minister said the shields were in developed in, in double quick time to address the potential shortage of masks were primarily should be rightfully in healthcare workers soon. He highlighted that we are not dependent on any country to get them as they are produced locally, adding that the DSTA has already started working on the improved models based on feedback. The agency is working with the Racer Technology, a medical device manufacturer, to produce the face shields. Here and is currently supplying them to the various public agencies, including the Ministry of Defense. Okay, so that's just one. I'm gonna show, I want to share two more with you. So let, that was in Singapore. Now let's go over the world. We are going to go to Malaysia now. And they built a less high-tech one. The COVID-19 has changed the way people interact with one another, especially with the physical distance measures in place. It has made basic everyday interactions difficult for most people, including for the deaf community who regularly rely on subtle facial cues for communicating with others. As more people make the habit of wearing masks to protect themselves from the coronavirus, the community increasingly is becoming challenged for the deaf community. The problem is mass covers the mouth and the nose area, obstructing visual signs that they would otherwise be essential for the deaf people to communicate with. Yeah, so think about that. You know, when you have these deaf people, they kind of like lip read, right? 
Well, how can they lip read if your face is covered? Good. So this mask has resolved that issue. Fully cottonized of the issue, Dave David has taken it upon himself to come to the up with a transparent mask design that aims to make communication a little bit easier for deaf people during the virus. The 41-year-old resident of Single Village, Maha, said they need for the mask that allowed others to see lip movement has become increasingly urgent. Okay, so this goes on about that, and there's a picture of this that I will put on the YouTube that you can look at, and I think this addresses a, addresses a problem that uh, no one really talked about, and they found a solution for it. Now, I want to wrap things up here with now, when, when people give birth, the babies are most exposed to every kind of germ there is in the world, right? And because of the new virus, everything airborne can get them sick. So, in Thailand, the Thai hospitals protect babies born in a pandemic with a face shield. They show this off, too. Fast asleep, saddled in a towel, and a snug pink beanie. A baby born during the pandemic of Thai, Thai hospital needs one last item to ensure her health. It's a face shield. The Bangkok hospitals are using the shields on newborns in the maternity wards to protect the spread of the virus. Thailand's have detected 2,600 cases of the virus with 41 deaths, a relatively low number despite that being the first country outside China to record the information. So if you want to see that picture, that's on Facebook as well. And my question for you, since we learned about the deaf people and the baby issue, what uh, what the, your creative minds around you or in your community, what have they come up with to solve problems that are caused by social distancing or the virus? Uh, what new helpful tech apps or inventions have you seen come about? over this crisis. Please list your thoughts and comments below. I'd love to hear from them. On our next article of the day, I, this one's from Ukraine, it goes almost 600 healthcare workers infected with the virus in Ukraine. So this is a shout out, not just to Ukraine, but to all the medical workers on the front lines. Like I recall yesterday, there was an article about some doctor, I don't know if it's in America or some other place in Asia, but they got the virus and then because they're working, and then they couldn't go home to their kid. They were separated because of that. So let's read about this teeny article. And again, this is a shout out, and I think you know you should appreciate your medical workers. Almost 600 healthcare workers in Ukraine have tested positive for the bug since ec epidemic began. Health Minister Stefan said that this at the beginning of April 14th, as Ukraine con concerned, the, well, Ukraine reported, since the beginning of this epidemic, a total of 12,000 persons per people with suspected bug 19 have been recorded in Ukraine including 1,659 healthcare workers. 3,372 cases of bug-19 have been confirmed, including, including 594 healthcare workers. According to health minister, 64 cases of the bug have been reported among the healthcare workers over the past day. Wow. As of Tuesday morning, Ukraine reported 3,372 laboratory-confirmed bug cases, including 98 deaths and 120 recoveries. So again, this is a shout-out to show how real things are, and this kind of reminds me of 9-11 in America when I grew up. You know, the, the, these towers came down, and all these firefighters, they ran in there, and then they got out wherever they could. Eventually, the building came down upon them and killed many. Others did survive, but the ones that survived, they uh, had usually lung problems because of all the smoke they inhaled, and it took 
years and decades for them to actually get health coverage uh, to clear that up. So they, my point is, though, they put their lives on the line for the public. And that's why I want you guys to always remember every day to give a thanks or a shout out to these kind of people. And then moving on to our last story of the day. Okay, this is the last article of the day. And it's probably going to be the hottest topic and most emotional one I'm going to do today. So first I'm going to read the article. And then I'm going to give you my opinion and why it disturbs me so much. A North Taiwan family of four fined for violating the virus quarantine rules. This is again is in the Taiwan News. Taipei Times. A woman from Kuyong, her daughter-in-law, and two grandchildren violated the virus quarantine rules, leading to a fine of 1.7 million Taiwanese dollars, which is 56,000 U.S. dollars. The four should have stayed home for 14 days after returning home from a trip to the United States. So they kind of flew in, you know, for self quarantine for 14 days, but they did it. However, after the mother showed symptoms of the Wuhan virus, she violated the rules and took her family out of town to a hospital in Taipei City for testing. After the woman tested positive, she received the maximum fine, one million, because her trip to Taipei was ruled as a high-risk out outing. Her daughter will have to pay seven hundred thousand, but as the two gr grandsons are minors, they are not subject to fines. The health authorities said, so some grace there. Originally. She had reported repeatedly uh, for permission. She pleaded repeatedly for permission to undergo testing at Kunxiang, but refused asking for an individual to drive them to the capital instead. A request to seek medical care in another area can be allowed, but only if the local government agrees with that person leaving home. Also, the visit must be organized and managed by the health authorities. In the Kunsung's case, not only did the woman not seek approval of the two cities involved, but she also arranged for private trans transport without consulting authorities, according to the UND report. Okay, so stay tuned for my, my thoughts on all this one. So here are my thoughts. On this whole article we just read, putting others at risk. So this couple, she so she didn't quarantine for 14 days and even knew she was sick. So she thought she was above the law. Even while sick in her house, she hung out with the three other family members in her house. So she touched everything and she could easily potentially got all three of those members sick. And then this probably was not the first time they went out. Therefore, they touched everything else and interacted with other people. Why do women think they are above the law? Has society just been a yes ma'am to everything they do or want? Hence, depriving them to learn and cherish values of responsibility and purpose? I mean, just why is Spain have a horrible, a horrible outbreak of the virus? They already linked that to the women's movement because they just all walked on the street. And even during the pandemic, they thought, hey, we're above the law. We're going to do what we want. And guess what? And I mean, they should charge those women for, for the, all the health care bills, all the cumulative damages for all the people who lost wages. But again, they they don't care and they think they can do whatever they want. And have we as a society failed in raising good women in our generation to in the to be able to nurture and produce good families? Yes, I know there are countries and there are cultures out there that do a really good job at this, and this is their purpose for their culture for their country. But if we want to talk about but like a lot of the Western ones. 
they they keep putting that too much on that individualism or independence, but you know independence and individualism is, is false. You could be the uh, most popular player like Tom Brady, but you have to have your team to uh, either cover for you when people want to attack for you. You have to have your wide receiver open to catch the ball. So yes, they prop you up, but here's a team to, to accomplish the goal, a team to build something, and a lot of people have forgot that in this generation. Most countries cheerlead women to walk away from families, usually to extract resources from them easily. You know, I'm not really totally dog on um, the divorce rates and whatnot, but because um, some countries have high, some have low. But when a country makes it so divorces are paid for by the government or just fill out papers, this and that, basically they, they, they want the easiest way to extract resources with the least amount of work. And if it is, hey, we'll pay for all the fees just so we can get more from this person, then they will do it. And therefore we promote it. And then moving on, this particular girl, she put her children's life at risk. We know the young and old are the two highest risk groups. Remember, most of the old people die not necessarily with the virus, but they die of other conditions with the virus. And the young don't have the high immune system. So she did a double no-no. And an emotional, an, an emotional person or an individual is very easy to control versus a family unit. That's, you know, most good example is if a woman breaks down, most people want to go and help. Or if, if somebody is in rage or fear or scared, they will sign away their rights. So be careful, you know, don't let people get advantage of your emotions. It is people like this that make the government put out stronger laws to take away our freedoms like we saw in Malaysia earlier today. Remember, Malaysia said, there's no more tickets. We're just taking you to court, then to jail. It, now, if this girl was in Malaysia, she would already be in jail if this happened tomorrow. But other countries, like, you know, look at, hey, you know, this other country did it, and people followed it, so let's apply that ourselves. Her actions affected you. Yes, you, the listener. Even if she's in a different country than you, in the end, governments control or please women. Women influence kids and men follow, as few are brave enough or able enough to lead or advocate for themselves. What if you were the husband or father of these two kids, or even the wife, the husband of the wife? What would you do if your wife came home with a fine that cost as much as your house? Remember, that was like a $57,000 fine. That is a house that you your husband have to pay for that's higher than that's like a whole student loan or what higher student loan than some places anyway leave your thoughts below am i like crazy on this i don't know these are my thoughts and i really want to hear yours on this story well that will conclude loyal world news thank you for spending your time with me today feel free to like subscribe or drop a comment below if you're on the go Listen to my podcast with the link provided in the description. I will see you tomorrow to share more world news.